This program is a paid commercial announcement and in no way represents the views of WPHT or its management. WPHT, WPHT HD, WOGL HD3, Philadelphia. A radio.com station. Investor Schooling Live with Phil Falcone and Larry Steinhaus on Talk Radio 1210. WPHT. Good afternoon and welcome to Investor Schooling Live, coming to you from Investor Schooling Headquarters. I'm Phil Falcone, here with my business partner, Larry Steinhaus. We are the founders of Investor Schooling. Get ready to learn real estate investing and stock option investing. Call us with your questions now at 855-939-1137. That's 855-939-1137. Hey, Larry, lower your phone, will you? I did, I did, I did, really, I did. That's right. We are a live program, so you can call us anytime during the show, and we'll take your calls. Investor Schooling is located in Langhorne, Pennsylvania, serving the Philadelphia area in a real brick-and-mortar building. That's correct. We're local Philadelphia guys, accessible to our students a minimum of two nights per week. If you want to learn this business, and that's the business of real estate investing, and stock option investing. You want to learn it from people who live it every day. That's us. Yo, Larry, what's happening? Hey, Phil, I, I got to talk to you about something that's really interesting. First of all, you know, sorry about my phone. I didn't mean to upset you there. You know, I know, how, I know ups how upset you get when, you know, I, I make a mistake. Well, it's not because you made a mistake. It's how often you make mistakes. Oh, is that so? <laughs> Well, I'm wondering if I made a mistake recently because I just did something that was very different and very out of character for me. What's that? I invested in cryptocurrency. Yeah, I, I don't think that's a mistake. I think that's a, a logical move. Yeah, you know, I, I don't disagree with you. Actually, you know, we have so many students that come to us. So we're not big. It's, I want to say we're not big fans of crypto, cryptocurrency. It's not that we don't think that it's good or bad. We have no opinion on it, but we just didn't teach it. So. Everybody's coming up to us and saying, hey, cryptocurrency this, cryptocurrency that, cryptocurrency this, cryptocurrency that. I'm like, you know what? Let me at least find out how to buy it, which I didn't even know how to do it until a couple of days ago. I actually went to Coinbase, signed up for a Coinbase account. And, you know, I, I was also surprised at how easy it was to buy it and how easy it was to buy fractions of a, you know, a, a, of a, of a coin, which, which also surprised me. Because it's like, you know, if we're buying gold and we're buying silver. You can't buy a fraction of gold or a fraction of silver. You're buying it in set amounts, you know, exactly an ounce or exactly half an ounce or whatever it is. You know, it, it's not fractions. So you can actually take, for example, 200 bucks and buy $200 worth of Bitcoin or $200 worth of Ethereum. Then I also decided, I was looking at this and I was saying, all right, um, if I took Bitcoin and I took Ethereum, which are the two, the two top coins, I compared it to my comparison of silver and gold. You know, gold right now is, oh, gold is killing me right now, by the way. Gold right now is uh, is just under eighteen hundred, and oh, actually, I'm sorry, just under seventeen hundred. Yeah, I wish it was eighteen hundred. Just under seventeen hundred, and Bitcoin is right around fifty thousand. Then we got silver, which, if you remember a while back, silver was at around nineteen. Now it's around twenty seven. It was around nineteen, and I said that silver would double sooner than gold would double, and sure enough, silver is up thirty percent, and gold is still sitting there, hasn't even moved hardly at all. I actually looked at the same thing. I looked at it the same way. Bitcoin being 50, Ethereum being about 1,500, 1,600. And I said, all right, what's going to double first? I really believe Ethereum would double first. So yeah, It's a natural yeah. I, natural thing, I thought, too. Yeah. Why buy the thing that's $50,000? Well, just buy the thing that's $1,500. Right, exactly. Right. right. So I actually I ended up buying about two coins worth of Ethereum just for fun, just to see what it does. Mm -hmm. I have no – you know, I, I'm curious. I, you know, I would love to see it become, you know, 50,000 like Ethereum. That would be awesome. But at the same time, if it doesn't, it's okay too. It's only three thousand dollars. But I, I'm curious to see what it is, and then and then maybe we'll we'll uh, we'll we'll see whether we'll add it to our school or not. At the moment, we're not. But if anybody wants to talk to me about it privately, I have no problem with that. And in fact, if you want to call in and talk about anything about real estate, about stock options, about about um, cryptocurrency, eight five five nine three nine eleven thirty seven. 855-939-1137. You can talk to us directly. If you're on Facebook, feel free to talk to us and call us again also at 855-939-1137 or leave a, a chat message, but we may not be able to see it. Uh, we may not be able to see you, it on time. Let me tell you something interesting about Bitcoin and these cryptocurrencies. 
The other day, I'm driving down York Road. I'm right by County Line Road and York Road. There's a gas station on the corner there that um, has a sign out that says, you can buy Bitcoin here. Yeah, that was interesting, too. Yeah, I've seen okay. that, yeah. So this, this company, uh, I forget the name of them, but they were featured on uh, Fox Business last week. Uh, so I certainly knew it last week. I just don't remember the name right now. And what they're doing is they're putting these Bitcoin cryptocurrency vending machines uh, all throughout the United States. Pretty so, interesting. Yeah, I, I've seen that. And actually, you could you can it's almost like a, it's an ATM machine basically. You could cash in. You can you can get ca money out just like any other. It, it's it, cryptocurrency is going to be interesting in the future. I, I believe there's definitely a place for it. I'm also very, very happy about the blockchain technology. You know, if they use the blockchain technology for voting, there would never be voter fraud. And that would be amazing. But you do know that there would be one side of the uh, of the uh, political groups that would say, oh, we don't want that. That's that's not fair. I can't imagine which political party you're referring to. Yeah, it's definitely not the one that we're affiliated with. I got I got to tell you that right now. <laughs> anyway, um, another thing that's made me think that this Bitcoin is is definitely here to stay is um, I follow some famous traders, people who run funds, people who run ETFs. Yep. And um, there's a number of them that are putting their money, a lot of their money, into Bitcoin. Yeah, and I've seen that too. And and you know, again, it's like it's kind of odd. I, this is a big fad, and and you know how you know we teach people to stay away from the fads. We stay away from the GameStop and the AMC fad, and any other fad that's out there. But this is a big fad that might have legs, and that's why I I decided to to try it and see what it looks like. But I'll let you know. You guys let me you know ask yeah. me about it in class, and I'll tell you how how I'm doing. I happen to be I mean, up five percent since I bought it, though. Yeah, I mean, uh, I agree with you that it. it it's uh, it feels like a fad, but it also feels like something that's going to be around. And I mean, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what governments do about it because they don't like it. Well, yeah. India tried to ban it, and then they recently changed their mind on that, which is interesting too. I'm I'm shocked that they that they changed their mind on it. That's kind of weird that they actually came out and said, "No, we're not, we're not going to change our mind on it." Yeah. So so somebody and, and, and the people who lose in this are the poor politicians because they won't be able to steal as easily as they can now. Right, but but you know who who else loses from this is the average Joe who, you know, cuts their neighbor's grass for 25 bucks and and doesn't claim that on their taxes. That's that's what's going to happen with Bitcoin. It's going to become it's going to become irrefutable transactions. And taxes are going to be based on these irrefutable, irrefutable transactions. It may even be one possible plus. I don't know if it's a plus, but maybe it's a plus where you don't have to do tax returns anymore because they'll be automatically calculated for you by the blockchain technology. Well, it would, that would solve the earlier problem we were talking about before we started the show. Which, which one was that? We were just talking about oh, the yeah, yeah, accounting yeah, the, issues. Yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. We were talking about accounting issues. right. <laughs> <laughs> Investor schooling needs a new accountant. <laughs> That's what we said we weren't going to say on the show, right? All right. Anyway, so what else we got going on today, Phil? All right. We got a number of interesting topics today we're going to talk about. One of them is um, why does Phil, what does Phil love about vacation rentals? What is better, stocks or real estate? How long will this real estate seller's market continue? What time does this radio show ever come on the air? <laughs> <laughs> How does the stock market work? There you go. Yeah, there's a lot of people who uh, are interested in that. How does the stock market work? You've got an interesting theory on that. We'll talk about that later Sounds on. Sounds like a plan. And then the most important segment of our show that we do every week is we have the stock option Sultan come on, and he comes on and mm. gives the picks of the week for this upcoming week. This is the one segment of radio where you can actually listen to this segment and, and hopefully make some money next week. Hey, I got to do a shout out to uh, somebody, by the way. Uh, there's a, there's, uh, Mike Ward wrote into us. Uh, he, he's, he's, he's listening. I'm thinking he's listening right now with a bunch of friends of his. And I just want to say shout out to Mike Ward and say, hey, thanks so much for listening. We really appreciate it. What else can you tell me about Mike Ward? 
Well, I don't know if he wants us to tell everything, but he did write us a letter, and we have it upstairs if anybody wants to come oh, see it. Okay. It, you know, it may be personal information. Yo, Mike, what's up, man? Hey, Mike, you know, if you could get to a phone, 855-939-1137. But if you can't, we understand. And if there's anybody else out there who wants to talk to us, 855-939-1137. We're talking real estate. We're talking stock options. We're talking stock market. We're talking Bitcoin. We're talking anything that has to do with money. And we'd love to talk to you about that, too. And if you want to uh, take a complimentary class this Thursday, go to investorschooling.com. That's investorschooling.com. All right, where do you want to go, Phil? Well, why don't we start with what does Phil love about vacation rentals? You want to answer that? You're gonna you, wait. Let me see if I got this straight. I got to answer what you love about vacation rentals. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'll answer it if you, if you don't want to. I, I would think that that how can I answer an opinion question of, of your of your? How can I get into your mind and, and have an opinion question? Because you pretty much know my philosophies on on all real estate and stock option transactions. It's all about money. Okay. Did I do it the way you do it? Money. How do you say it? It's fine. Boy, you, you don't even want to go along with me today. What, are you mad at me or something? Well, um, I'm usually mad at you. I'd say I'm mad at you more than I'm, you know, not mad at you. Well, you know, just because I don't give you enough time to speak on, on, a, on a Thursday night and I go over my time doesn't mean you need to be mad at me all the time. All right, so let's talk about vacation rentals. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing that I love about them. You get paid 100% of your money up front. I know one of the things that you really like about vacation rentals. You get paid 100% of your money up front. Okay. You going to you going to add anything to this conversation or <laughs> should I shut your mic off? <laughs> I got control of the mic. So you can't shut my mic off. <laughs> well, I can rip your mic out of that <laughs> holder over there. Okay. So it's one of the things I really love about the vacation rental business. <laughs> After being a landlord in in Philadelphia for the last uh, 32 years, I got a little sick and tired of trying to collect rent money off of people who don't want to pay me. And in the vacation rental business, somebody that you don't even know goes to a website and, and wires you or PayPal's you or whatever you, all of the money, 100% of the money that you need for a vacation rental that they're not even taking for five months. So I went from the extremes of getting paid in the rears five months to now getting paid up front five months. That's an awfully nice revision to your portfolio. Awfully I like nice. It. Another thing I like about the vacation rental business is, so mine are all in Florida, and when somebody stays in my house, they have to leave at 11 a.m., similar to the way it works in most hotels, and sitting out in the parking lot most times, not all the time, but most times, is the cleaners. Because the cleaners often have multiple houses to clean, and they don't have time to waste because they probably have to spend about an hour and a half at each house, and they may be hitting four houses, five houses in a day. So they're actually sitting in their cars with the air conditioning running, because it's Florida, waiting for the people to come out. And if people don't come out a few minutes after 11, they go up and knock on the door. So what I really like about that is I get a set of eyeballs on the property while the tenant is still in the house or still in the parking lot out front. And I like that. It makes me feel comfortable because even though I'm a 18-hour drive away from my vacation rentals, it makes me feel comfortable that I've got a set of eyeballs on every single house as an automatic part of my management system. So I'm a little concerned right now. You basically said that you have somebody out in the parking lot looking in the windows. Is that right? Wrong. Okay. They just go up and knock on the door and say, hey, you guys got to get out of here. <laughs> it's 11 o'clock. Time for checkout. Pack up your stuff immediately. We need to clean. Yeah, I know. That's, 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 that, that makes more sense. Yeah, just... they got a tight schedule. Some of these people, they, they'll bang out four or five or six vacation rentals in a day. That's a lot of work. Yeah, I, I understand yeah. that, and that's that's actually kind of cool. I actually like it. All right, so I kind of I think your vacation rental. I think the, my favorite thing about the vacation rental though is how much money you make with the vacation rentals. Well, you get paid a premium, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, you t you. I remember when you were. I remember years ago when you bought your first houses in Florida, you were debating whether to do a monthly rental versus a vacation rental, and the math came out to an enormous difference. That's why we never. We've actually never rented anything annually. 
Right, you rented everything on the vacation rental. Yeah. Exactly right. I did recently let an employee live in one of my houses, but it was during the COVID year, and um, he uh, he needed to move out of the place he was in, and I and I knew that this house wasn't really going to rent because COVID and the beaches were closed and all that stuff. <coughs> so I put this employee in it, and uh, it was a nice little deal for the both of us. Yeah. Um, he. I made an arrangement with him where he didn't have to pay me rent if he just worked on one of my vacant houses. So he worked on one of my vacant houses, and he he figured out how much the rent money was going to be, plus the cable bill and the electric bill, and it was ballpark around two grand a month. And I said, "Fine, give me two grand of value in on the house that you're repairing." And it was a beautiful trade off because I wasn't going to rent the house anyway during the COVID period, sure. with the beaches being closed and everything. So it was like, and he needed a house, so he was very happy with the deal, and I was very happy with the deal. So is he still there, or have you started renting it again? Uh, no, he moved into a, a, a local property, Okay. which he wouldn't want me to say where that is. No, that, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I just, okay, that's, yeah. that's interesting. He, okay. moved, he moved out as, right. as agreed upon, and he, he works for me, and we have a pretty good relationship. So, so, uh, so, so, somebody on Facebook is asking a question that, that I know the answer to, but I, I thought I'd ask you: Do you use a realtor service to rent out your vacation homes in Florida? There's a lot of options when you, if you want somebody to manage your properties in Florida, or anywhere for that matter. Realtors will manage it. Uh, professional vacation rental companies will manage it. Uh, local companies are usually the best. So. In Siesta Key, however, the the people who are really good at it, they charge about uh, 20% of the gross rent. So that's a pretty hefty fee to pay. Pretty high. Actually, I've seen people charge 50, so so actually that's not bad. Well, 50 is absolutely insane. I mean, Poconos, we, they do that a lot. We pretty much uh, we pretty much manage our own vacation rentals, the people that I own them with, and they do it for 8%. So it's a decent yeah. deal that I've structured. That's great. And I don't have to get involved in the work. Although I did manage the vacation rentals from 2011 until recently. So I managed them for like eight years. You liked it. I remember. I, I didn't mind doing it. You know, yeah. it, it, if, if the person who's answering the phone, in this case was me or my wife, when people called me, a lot of times they were asking really important questions to them. It was important questions to like them. Like how far to the beach? Well, how far to the beach is the one question I've been asked probably a million times. Right. But but sometimes people have boats. They have Winnebago's. They need to know things like where can I, where can I put my Winnebago? Uh, how long's your driveway? Where's a good place to dock my fishing boat? And 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 when you when you've been going to a place like I've been going to, Florida for many years now. I'm uh, I'm I'm at nine years now. I've been down there. I know the area inside and out, so I can answer all their questions. Including the one that uh, we used to have a house that was called on VRBO. You don't put the address, or at Airbnb. You don't put the address. You put like a tagline. Sure. So we put a tagline that says "60 steps to sand," and people would call all the time and go, "How far are you from the beach?" What was that about like two miles? <laughs> How far are you from the beach? Like two uh, miles? Did or you, was it a mile? Did you was read it? the most prominent <laughs> sentence? To describe this property is 60 steps to sand. Yeah, that's amazing, right? Yeah, yep. It, it's just amazing. But uh, I, I find that fascinating yeah. that you, I, I actually used to find it fascinating that sometimes I'd be in the car with you, we'd be going to do a little radio show, we'd be on our way to Philadelphia, and, and I'd be listening to you talk to some of the, some of the people calling in. I used to find, find that hysterical. But I also thought it was crazy for you to be managing that stuff because it was a lot of time. Well, it's really just phone calls and emails. It's it, it wasn't if you added up all the time that it took it, it, it it's you're not getting 25 phone calls a day. So and if you did get 25 phone calls a day, you'd probably have the next month off. So years ago, I owned a and B. I actually owned a real B&B before mm -hmm. all this Airbnb stuff. And I used to use a company called Webervations. Is that what you were using? No, no. OK, you, you does it still exist? I don't even know. I never heard of them, okay. so I can't comment on it. Okay. But uh, we were using Airbnb, VRBO, Booking.com, TripAdvisor. And then there's actually like overriding software programs that can actually manage those companies. Oh, okay. And you can ultimately get to just one software program that would trickle down the information or extract the information back and forth 
a lot of problems with those things too, though. Obviously, you you know you're a very uh, high tech kind of guy. Can you imagine a software program managing four other oh yeah sure software programs? Yeah, yeah. It, 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 there was a lot of problems with them. Yeah, I can't even get an email to go out right. Right. It, it, <laughs> it came with a world of trouble, but uh, you know that's right. that's the business. Yeah, I, I totally totally understand. Hey, if you have any questions, you can call us at eight five five nine three nine eleven thirty seven. 855-939-1137. If you would like to take a complimentary class, you can go to investorschooling.com. By the way, if you're listening to our voice live or you're listening to our voice on a pre-recorded show, you can call that number, 855-939-1137, and someone will probably answer the phone. And it might even be me. As a matter of fact, I get a lot of calls during the week. Did you know that, Phil, for all the shows we're on? Yeah, I know. And it's kind of fun. We talk to people, and they're like, oh, can I get on the radio with those guys? I'm like, which guys? You know, the guys on the radio right now. You, oh, you mean me? It's just really funny when, when they say that they don't realize that they're actually talking to me. But, yeah, they can do that, too. Why don't we do this? Why don't we go to a commercial and we'll come back and we'll hit another topic. Is that cool? Yeah, I guess that's uh, allowed. All right, let's do it. Hi, I'm Phil Falcone from Investorschooling.com. I'm inviting you to a complimentary class in Langhorn this Thursday night at 7 p.m. I will teach you how to buy ugly houses and make them beautiful. As a bonus, we will also teach you stock option investing. So get your butt to this meeting, 7 p.m. this Thursday night, Langhorn, 215-876-3002, investorschooling.com. Hey, everybody. It's Larry Sinus from investorschooling.com. You heard my partner, Phil Falcone, tell you why you should be there this Thursday night to learn about real estate investing and learn about stock options trading. We're telling you right now, you will make more money than you've ever made in your entire life if you learn these two skills. Be there this Thursday night at 7 o'clock in our Langhorn headquarters. Go to Investorschooling.com. Pull over right now. Take out your phone and go to Investorschooling.com. RSVP right now. Investorschooling.com. See you Thursday. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for $4.95 a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full-time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms. You get the mailboxes. You get the printer, the copy, the scanner. You get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month. But it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Hey, everybody, it's Larry Sinus from InvestorSchooling.com. And I'm Phil Falcone from InvestorSchooling.com. Hey, what are we going to teach him this Thursday night, Phil? We're going to teach you how to invest in real estate so you can build a basis to get rich. And I promise I'm going to teach you stock options. So go to InvestorSchooling.com and RSVP right now. Right, Phil? We've been in this business for 30 years. We have amazing amounts of information to share with you. Get your butt to this meeting this Thursday night in Langhorn. InvestorSchooling.com. Right. Welcome back to Investor Schooling Live. Hey, I'm here. I'm, we're here. I'm, I'm here. I'm Larry Steinhouse, and I'm here with Phil Falco and my business partner. I, I, how do you do that? You do that so well. Say it. Business partner. Oh, that actually hurt my ear that time. 855-939-1137. 855-939-1137. Give us a call if you got a question. You want to talk to us. You want to you want to make more money? Anybody out there want to make more money? I don't think anybody out there wants to make more money. Investor schooling, that's the place you should be. You can yeah. come here on Thursday night at 7 o'clock, and it's a complimentary class. That that means it's free. <laughs> it's free and complimentary? Wait, uh, so no, I didn't say that. This time I said that means I know. it's free. I, that's pretty good. I like that. I'm taking so, a different angle on it. So, you know, we've been talking about this $15 an hour thing, right? And, Not really. And, and we got people who, they, you know, they could either make $15 an hour or they can come to our class like Andrew, one of our students, who made $23,000 in a month on his first social deal. That was a cool story, wasn't it? Yeah, very cool story. The guy's an Amazon driver. He comes here, and he's delivering packages, and he goes, what the heck do you guys do here? I keep bringing packages here. And then he, uh, and then we told him what he, do what we, he does. He became a student, and sure enough, he did his first deal. One of the most uh, interesting things that you'll see here at Investor Schooling is, and it's it's totally undeniable once you're here, is come in, come walk in the room or attend on Zoom, and you'll listen to our students 
talking about how much money they're making. Yeah, it's kind of cool. They're making money in stock options. They're making money in real estate. They're, they're, some of them are lending money out to other students. It's, there's so many things going on. It's really, a, it's really a, a pleasure to watch all this happen. It's fascinating. All right, what do we got next? Okay, so what's better, stocks or real estate? All right, so this is a, it's, it's a tr- question that, that people think that you're tricking me on. Because when I talk about stock options, it's a totally different beast than stocks. So let's talk about the actual question, which is which is better, real estate or stocks. By far, real estate is better. By far. Because, you know, just the fact that you can leverage real estate, you know, you, you, to buy a $100,000 property, you don't need $100,000. You only need you know, maybe, I mean, you, we teach you to use zero, which is the truth. We could actually do it with zero. But let's say the average person doesn't know better puts down 20%, that's $20,000, and they're leveraging a $100,000 property. On average, properties go up 7%. That's a lot of leverage. If you go in the stock market and you put $100,000, I'm sorry, you put $20,000 into the stock market, you can possibly buy on margin for up to about $40,000. But I wouldn't advise that. Exactly. And on top of that, you know, it, you're not even, even if you did the same 7 or 8%, even if you did 10%, you're not going to come close to what you're going to return on your real estate. Plus... The real estate is kind of cool because the tenants pay for it. You don't pay for it. That's my favorite part about real estate. Well, I would agree with you that real estate is far better from the standpoint of the minimum amount of work that's required. You buy a house, stick a good tenant in there, forget about it. Six, seven, eight years goes by, and these people have have just built up all kinds of equity for you, and it's, it's a wonderful business. One of our um, one of our employees, uh, Jamie, she bought a house for one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and this was about nine months ago. She bought this house, and I don't want to get into the complexities of her deal, but she didn't get the deal appraised until last week. Last week, when it appraised, it appraised at two hundred and thirty-eight thousand dollars, which is eighty-eight thousand dollars above what she paid for right, it. Right, exactly. Where else can you just Build up your net worth of eighty to eighty eight thousand dollars on a real estate deal she bought nine months ago, just like that. She's she doesn't have eighty eight grand in a suitcase. She doesn't have it in a pile of cash at home, but she has it nonetheless. So it was six months ago. Whatever. No, no, I know, but th- that's even more impressive. I'm guilty. I'm yeah. guilty of uh, exaggeration sometimes. You exaggerated the wrong way, which is good. Oh, okay. You. <laughs> well, what's the opposite of exaggeration? I don't know. <laughs> Can somebody call up, call in at 855-939-1137 and tell Phil what the opposite of exaggeration is? Yeah, do we have an uh, uh, English professor out there who can help me out with that? There you go. 855-939-1137. You can call in and ask your questions. All right, let's keep going. All right, let's keep going. This is right up your alley. You should know the answer to this one. Is, is, it, is it what is Phil thinking right now? How long will this real estate seller's market continue? Ah, this is a great question. Yes. So. So I remember when COVID hit last year and everybody was saying the same thing. Oh, my God, real estate value is going to crash. Oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. And I said just the opposite. I said I knew exactly what was going to happen, which was that the government was going to flood us with money and the real estate market was going to skyrocket. And that's exactly what's happening. However, it's going to have a bad day. Now, my guess is the bad day is about three years from now. It's it's a rough guess, but it's about three years from now, and it's going to be very similar to what happened in two thousand eight. It's not going to. It probably won't be as devastating, but it's going to be. It's a similar shock to people as it was in in two thousand eight, and the reason is for the same exact reason. The two thousand eight was caused by two thousand one and nine eleven. We flooded the market with all kinds of money because of nine eleven to prevent people from going bankrupt and losing their house, and that's what's happening now. Now there is. A slight change in that logic too, where we have a bunch of people who took that the moratorium on their, on their, uh, on their payments, and those people haven't been making payments for three or four months now on their mortgage, and they've gotten used to not making those payments for three or four months. They weren't smart enough to put the money away. You know, if their payment was two thousand dollars and they were short by five hundred dollars, they should have taken the fifteen hundred and put it away, and they didn't do it. That's for sure. And those people are going to be in trouble in about six months. By the way, those are called opportunities for us. So uh, you might find this interesting. We, ha- we have a fairly substantial SBA loan. Okay. okay. At this point, it's under a million. But it, when I borrowed the money in 
Probably like 2008. This was Executive Deck Suites, right? Executive yeah, Deck, right. right. When I borrowed the money in 2008, uh, it was 1.7 million. Okay, now it's under a million. That's right? great. And during COVID, Terry got six months of payments. Deferred. They weren't deferred. They, they were paid by SBA. No kidding. Yes. Wow. Okay, so listen to this. Uh, I recently get a letter from the SBA, and they said, you don't have to make the next three. They actually withdraw the money right from our bank account. Right. They said, you don't have to make the next three payments. Wow. So I called the SBA because I was concerned that they might be moving it to the back or something. Right. I don't want them to do that. Right, right? sure. I'd be course. happy to pay it. It's fine. And they said, nope, this is part of the stimulus package that Trump put in before he left office. Wow. Three more months. So it would be nine total months at uh, no 9500 a month. Yeah, that's fantastic yeah, for you. Yeah, wow. Good. Yeah, how about that? Wow. Talk about finding uh, – we were just talking about how Jamie found 88000 Right. Well, I just got like uh, – 80000 I got nine months. Yeah, that's fantastic. I got nine months. That, yeah, that's fantastic. Hey, by but the way – The funny part was I had to call the SBA, and they said, oh, I can't answer that question, but this guy can answer it. He'll call you back. He called me back two and a half weeks later. Wow. But at least he gave me the answer. That's, and did you write his name down? And Yeah, I have it, and they sent me a letter. So. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, because uh, I would be concerned because sometimes you call the IRS. I don't, have you ever called the IRS and ask them a question and they I, give you the wrong answer? I usually never call the IRS. I call my accountant. Yeah, well. Let him handle I, it. I, it's just, the only reason I say that is because sometimes you know it's a complicated, especially with the things we do, it gets complicated. By the way, we got Glenn uh, from Philadelphia on hold. Come on, Glenn. What's going on, man? Talk to us. Hey guys, I just want to give you guys a big shout out. You guys are, are very refreshing. I listen to you. I'm from Newark, New Jersey. I'm in West Philadelphia now, and I appreciate the advice you give us. Wish you could be on daily, actually. But um, you asked about the opposite of I believe it was overestimating. I just wanted to say maybe uh, undermining or underestimating would be the opposite of over exaggerating. So maybe well, we can squeeze that in. That's too easy of a word, though. We were hoping, we were looking for something really fancy. Are you an English professor? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I disappointed you. Sorry. Yeah, what's what, what's wrong with you? <laughs> you know, I can think of an, I can think of another word that would would answer. An answer. I was just plain flat but, um, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> guys, thank you guys a lot, man, for having me on. Man, I appreciate hey, Glenn, you. you been, thanks for the advice you give us. Have you been to class yet? I have not. I have not. I have not. I actually just moved to this area, and I just switched you guys on. So I'm definitely going to make sure I stay in tune. Then that's like a skip and a jump over to investor schooling. That's true. We're but, right. We're so right how does it we're work? Really close. Yeah, you just hop on 95. Is it? Is it north, a, and you'll be here in no time. I, I'll definitely, I'll definitely do my investigating today if that's okay, and I'll keep in touch with you guys again. My name is Glenn yeah. Mack. Hopefully, you'll be hearing from me soon. Just go to investorschooling.com, put your name and email address in, and show up on Thursday night. We'll be glad to talk to you. And, and by the way, Glenn, just so you know, it's not a sales pitch, man. It's an actual class. We, we don't do sales pitches. Yeah. We, we, we bring you into a class. If you like it, we'll tell you more. If you don't like it, that's cool. We, 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 uh, we're we not doing the sales pitch thing. We're doing the actual class thing. You'll, you'll, you, I promise you, you will learn something, almost, almost as much as you'll learn in this show. I appreciate it, guys. I definitely will look into it today. Thanks a lot. Good talking to you, Glenn. Take care, man. All right, let's go to our next question. What time does this radio show come on the air? <laughs> so, you want to answer that, Larry? No, I, I, I think you're angry enough to answer it. All right. So, there's this thing called college sports, which keeps bumping us from our 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock hour on Sundays. So, we did get moved to Saturdays between 9 and 10 for like a month, and then they've moved us back. So I think we're in the clear for a while, but uh, let's just say Larry and I aren't too happy about it. We need to get a permanent time where we're not being changed all the time. So I, I got to tell you, I like the Saturday morning better, too. Yeah, so do I. It's more, it's, it's, I'm awake. I mean, I come, by, by, by Sunday at 3 o'clock, I'm asleep. I, li I like the Saturday morning time slot, too. There's this one person who could make it happen for us but she's not doing it i know i, I don't understand it why don't you call her out you want to call her right now in the air <laughs> hey hey let, let's go to let's go to commercial and find out if we could do that yeah i don't want to call her <laughs>
You don't want to go now? <laughs> that would be awesome. It would be a lot of fun. Uh, okay. All right. You want to do it? So, no, next question. Do <laughs> How does the stock market work? All right. The stock market works really simple. So I'm, I teach a theory, and it's something that, that I, I'm, <laughs> I'm the only one teaching it because I made it up. And it's really simple. It's not like what you think. And a lot of people think that the stock market is all based on politics, and it's based on earnings, and it's based on, uh, I don't know, whatever, whatever the news. These are all things that people think the stock market is based on. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, it's not like that at all. It's really about something that I call steak and tuna. And it's kind of funny because when you think about what steak and tuna is all about, it's really simple. There is a bunch of fund managers out there. And the fund managers, every week they need to make money. And the only way they make money, because by the way, I'm a fund manager, so I know how I make money. And I make money if, when I make my investors money. So when I make money for my investors, I get paid. When I don't make money for my, my investors, I'm starving. So basically what happens is a bunch of fund managers out there who basically at the end of the week, they want to go to the Capitol Grill, which is right down the road from Wall Street. Actually, if you've ever been in Wall Street, New York, you know that uh, the 120 Broadway is my favorite Capitol Grill. It, the actual entrance is on Nassau Street, and on Nassau Street, you could literally throw a rock at Wall Street where they're trading. So at the end of the day, they walk from Wall Street, they walk right over to the Capitol Grill, and they take out their girlfriend, they take out their wife, or they take out their mistress, or all three, to a nice steak dinner if they made money that week. So when the stock market is up, or when their stocks are up and it's on a top peak, I say they take their steak. And the problem is, if they don't take their steak soon enough, they end up with a tuna fish sandwich for dinner. And when you understand this theory, and everyone, when I explain this theory for the first time, everyone thinks I'm nuts. And then when they start watching the stock market for a little while, they totally get it. They totally see things like Zoom the other day. What happened to that? Zoom crushes earnings. Crushes earnings. Goes up 30 points after market. The next day, it's up 30 points for five minutes. Yeah. Five minutes. Then all of a sudden, it goes down. Then it dropped, it, it dropped 100 points from the peak in one day. With incredible earnings, that's pure, pure because, stake because and tuna. people with limited thinking capacity, otherwise known as idiots, <laughs> uh, those people, <laughs> <coughs> all they think is that Zoom was used for, Zoom was used for COVID, right? Did anyone ever occur to them that you could attend a school and live in California, and you could attend a school via Zoom? You know, it has nothing to do with COVID. I mean, yeah, it, it, it came in perfect time and opportune time yep. for Zoom to build the value of their company tremendously because of the fact that everybody was using it. But it's already a household name, okay? Everyone knows what Zoom is now. You've got to be living under a rock if you don't know about Zoom. And uh, the the stock, boy, is really just insanely volatile. Right, and, absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> You know, I've made some really nice money with it in the past, and this time around it was uh, really hard to figure out what the heck was going on. Like, with eight days left to go to earnings, it went down seven days in a row. Yeah, right. Right, and then it goes crazy on the one day. On the right. You had one day, which I still should have handled better than I did, but uh, anyway. Yeah, that's okay. We're going to have bad plays. I mean, that's <laughs> what happens in, in this market. You're going to have some bad plays. You know, we, we teach people that what we teach is a way that people can conserve their money – for another play, so the the odds of losing 100% of your money in any play is slim because of the way we teach it. And on top of that, the odds of losing your money in a play is less likely because of, again, because of what we teach. And that's why that's why the students are so successful here because we're teaching them not to lose money. We're not teaching them to make money. And that's what, I think that's what the difference is between what we teach and what other people teach. Other people are teaching, oh, yeah, if you if you play this stock option, you know, and you blah, 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 and this happens and that happens, or blah, 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 you'll make 1,000% on your money. Well, our average return on a stock option is 25 to 35%. That's our average return. Now, sometimes it's a little bit higher, but it's not much higher than that. And, and sometimes a little bit lower, but it's not much lower than that. And our average loss is 60 to 70%. But, so we still have money to conserve. And that's what we teach you how to do it and how to stay in that those parameters. And, of course, the odds are we're going to have a lot more wins than losses based on the way we teach it. So if you're, if you're losing money in the stock market or on a regular basis or losing st money in stock options on a regular basis or any other investment on a regular basis, come see us because we're going to teach you how to avoid losing money. So you want me to put you on the spot a little bit? Oh, I hate it when you put me on the spot, no, but okay. Want, I can answer the questions. If you no, no, no. You go ahead. Put me on the spot. We'll see what happens. Okay. I saw this uh, email come through to me right after I printed this script. 
So I hand wrote the uh, a question. Because I'm already I think in trouble. I think you're not going to be in trouble. Okay. This, is, this, this is easy stuff. <laughs> the email said, where to strike the big returns with a question mark, okay? And it made me think, okay, let's have a conversation about where you can strike big returns. Let's start with the real estate market. What do you need to have happen to strike a big return in the real estate market? All right, so I, I, I'm going to let you answer the question because I'm going to tell you right now, I, I'm not after big returns in anything. Okay. I'm always after conservative returns that, I'm, that I clearly believe won't let me lose money. Okay, but that's I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a big return. A big return I mean, in the real estate market? Yeah, I mean, I would give you a simple Well, wholesaling would be the best place to get I'm a big not, return. I'm not looking for a strategy. What I'm saying is, okay. like, okay, where do you strike the big returns in real estate? I'll tell you what I think it is. Go ahead. Motivated sellers. Oh, okay, I understand okay. what you're saying. Okay. So you're buying it right, correct. Right, you're, yeah. you're buying it from somebody who needs to sell it, and which opens up the opportunity, probably has circumstances like they're behind in payments, mm -hmm. that the house is... is uh, has a lot of repairs that are necessary, and you need an individual like an investor to step in and buy this thing. So, you know, as opposed to a traditional realtor bringing a buyer in, right? Yeah, and I also want to mention something. So, so a lot of times people look at us as, as slime, slimy. We're not. I mean, we're, we're helping these people. I have people, every single person I've ever bought a home from, and be honest with you, bought a home from them at a lower price than, than – uh, then the house is worth, because that's what we do, has always thanked me. Not because they felt they were getting ripped off or they, they, they didn't realize they were getting ripped off. That's not why. Because their situation was solved by something that I was able to do. I mean, we had, you know, one of the houses I, I bought recently, the guy, the guy needed to move. He just needed to move. He, he did not like his house. There was some problems with it. Actually, there were a lot of problems with it, like the floor was rotting out. And he couldn't live there anymore with his family. And no one would buy that house for him from him. I made him an offer. He accepted the offer. He moved on. I got him situated into another apartment. It was easy, and he thanked me. He loved it. Did I get that house in a bargain? Absolutely, I got that house in a bargain. But his life has been changed because I was able to get that house in a bargain and because I was able to help him, and no one else was able to help him. Well, you know, I talk about that often. Yeah. I mean, uh, and actually, I don't know that you just talked about it now, but I haven't heard you really say it during your presentations. And, uh, you know, I... I I end up talking about real estate probably more than you do, and that's why I bring it up a lot because I want people to know that you know you to be a real estate investor. Yeah, the best case scenario is is that you're you're helping somebody, right? Do we do we have to make money off of these deals? Of course we do, and the cheaper you can get a house for, the safer the deal is going to be. And trust me, you know you don't you don't you're not going to be an investor for your whole life and not lose money. You're going to lose money somewhere along the line. You sure. make a mistake. So trust me, it, it, it's really critical that you buy well. And buying well, part of buying well is getting something for as cheap as you can. Right? Yeah, and, and also I'll tell you, there are times we buy houses, we pay more than the house is worth, especially in the subject to deal, where the house might be worth 100000 and we're paying 120000 for it because we're taking over the mortgage payments. Well, sure. There are certainly scenarios – where we do that. So let's take that same question. Where do you strike the big returns? And let's apply it to option trading. Uh, oh, yeah. So when you buy low, exactly. You're going to buy low. You're going to buy a, a, at a bargain. That's exactly what we're looking for. And that's what we're teaching. We're teaching you how to find bargains in the stock market. Because there are a lot of people who teach. And, again, you know, we just teach something. I've actually gotten to the point where I think we're the only one teaching what we teach. Because it's gotten to the point where I see everyone teaching the same thing. We go, you and I, we go every once in a while. We, we you know, we kind of like, um, you know, uh, go to our competitors. We pay for their cat class. Go to our competitors. We don't, you know, we don't go in there going, "Hey, we're smarter than you." We just sit back and listen because we want to see what they're teaching, and decide what they're teaching. Maybe honestly, maybe we can learn something. And most of the time, we, we learn is that they're all teaching the same thing. And I remember teaching, when a, a presenter actually asked you. So if you're getting those returns, what are you doing here? Yeah, right. And your answer was to learn. <laughs> exactly. He, they, they, they looked us up later. They found, figured out who they were, who we were. And they were like – and they actually came to us later on and said, thank you for not saying anything. And said, look, we're not here to steal your students. We're here to, we're here to, just, to just to see what you guys are doing, right. if there's anything we should learn. Because that's, that's just rude. I, you know, I don't want to – I mean, if somebody showed up at, my, at our seminars and, and wanted to do that, I, I, I just would throw them out. So we, you know, we're just quiet, and you know, we don't do that. But we also learn. We also learned that they're all teaching. They're teaching spreads. We don't teach spreads. They're also teaching something else, which is a breakout. 
They're saying don't even touch the stock until it's a breakout. Now, here's the thing. Breakouts are wonderful, and I teach breakouts, but the problem with breakouts is, to me, that's the gravy. We go for the meat. And sometimes sometimes the gravy is overflowing, no doubt about it. But we've gotten our meat, and we've moved on. We've made our 25%, 30% in hopefully three weeks, because it's typically what happens. And, and after three weeks, it starts to go bad. But after, but if we made our money in three weeks, we move on. We make our 30% in three weeks. I mean, I'm sure that your stockbroker is making your 30% in three weeks too, right? Yeah, sure. Sure, he is. Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm sure his, your stockbroker is not even making you 7% in a year, but that's different. And anyway, so that's what we teach, and we, we, we teach it slightly – actually, we teach it very different. Everything from the tuna and steak theory to not teaching spreads to not not talking about spreads, everything is different. So, uh, I mean, if I were to add anything to what you said about where to strike the big returns in the stock market, I would add one thing to it, which would be you get in at a good price, mm -hmm. okay, on a down day, you wait for a down day, you're watching your stocks, the stocks that you are focused on, and you're getting in cheap because of a down day, but then also finishing with a, a nice earnings play. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The earnings plays are totally different, and, w and when we say earnings play, we actually teach you to not hold over earnings. Right. We want you to sell the day of or the day before earnings, which is exactly what we did with Zoom, except you and I both got greedy and went in the next day, and, and, uh, and that was a bad play. I didn't go into the next day. Oh, you didn't? I did. I went yeah. in the next day because I thought, I thought this was going to be a, a great, I, easy play. I just had a panicky moment. That's all. Oh, you had a panicky moment. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, so sometimes I break my own rules, and it's funny because those are when my losses usually happen. And we teach people never to never to do what I do, just do what I say. All right, you want to go to a commercial, and then when we come back, we'll bring out the stock option sultan? Let's do it. We'll see you in a couple minutes. Hi, I'm Phil Falcone from Investorschooling.com. I'm inviting you to a complimentary class in Langhorn this Thursday night at 7 p.m. I will teach you how to buy ugly houses and make them beautiful. As a bonus, we will also teach you stock option investing. So get your butt to this meeting, 7 p.m. this Thursday night, Langhorn, 215-876-3002, InvestorSchooling.com. Hey, everybody, it's Larry Sinus from InvestorSchooling.com. You heard my partner, Phil Falcone, tell you why you should be there this Thursday night to learn about real estate investing and learn about stock options trading. We're telling you right now, you will make more money than you've ever made in your entire life if you learn these two skills. Be there this Thursday night at 7 o'clock in our Langhorn headquarters. Go to InvestorSchooling.com. Pull over right now. Take out your phone and go to InvestorSchooling.com. RSVP right now. InvestorSchooling.com. See you Thursday. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for $4.95 a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full-time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms. You get the mailboxes. You get the printer, the copy, the scanner. You get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month. But it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Hey, everybody, it's Larry Sinus from InvestorSchooling.com. And I'm Phil Falcone from InvestorSchooling.com. Hey, what are we going to teach him this Thursday night, Phil? We're going to teach you how to invest in real estate so you can build a basis to get rich. And I promise I'm going to teach you stock options. So go to InvestorSchooling.com and RSVP right now. Right, Phil? We've been in this business for 30 years. We have amazing amounts of information to share with you. Get your butt to this meeting this Thursday night in Langhorn. InvestorSchooling.com. Welcome back. Welcome back to Investor Schooling Live. We are here, actually, Investor Schooling Headquarters. We are in our office. We actually transmit from our office. I don't know if you guys know that, but we transmit from our office. If you're ever here and you want to attend a free class and you want to see our studio, we'd be more than happy to show you our studio. Of course, if you want to take a complimentary class this Thursday, InvestorSchooling.com. And we have a few more minutes. So we're going to be going into the stock market. And if you want to call in, 855-939-1137. 855-939-1137. All right. Is it time? It's time. It's time. It's time for... The Stock so Options Sultan. Stock Options Sultan. 
So I'm going to tell you, if nev you've never seen an, a stock options sultan presentation, you are missing out. It is the most exciting thing that we do. It's so much fun. Right, guys? Who, you guys have seen it. You guys online on Facebook. Tell us how exciting it is when you watch the stock options sultan. All right, here's some picks. I'm telling you, Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. Uh, Facebook went up six points on Friday. And if you get lucky enough for it to go down five points this week, dive in, dive in, and dive in. It is done. It's not going down anymore. We're going to start heading towards earning. It's going to start moving up. I I predict stock, uh, Facebook will be in the 300, low, low 300, like, you know, uh, single-digit 300s. Um, it, it'll be in the 300s probably by May, June. And Apple is going to follow that. Not the 300s, of course, but Apple's going to follow that. I predict low 150, probably 160 would be where it's going to be again by June. Now, you got to be careful because that's not what we teach you to do. We teach you to play and play a lot, lo a lot lower than that. But at the same time, at 122 or 121 and a half right now, it's phenomenal play. It's just don't worry about this. This is that time. In fact, you know, the stock option sultan sends texts to the students. And about a week and a half ago, I sent a text out or the stock option sultan sent a text out that said, hey, the next three weeks are going to be rough. Be careful. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. The next three weeks will be rough. We're almost out of that three weeks. Probably one to two more weeks of it, and then it's over. Then we're going to start seeing some good returns once again. So what, we're, we're seven weeks out from earnings right now. We're seven weeks out from earnings. We're, we're right yeah. at the dead zone, which is something we teach yeah. also, something called the dead zone. Another thing that we, uh, we exclusively teach. By the way, everything we teach is proprietary. I, I, I don't know anyone else teaching what we teach. And it's it's a pretty pretty amazing when you start to realize how it actually works. I mean, when we have students that, that are making fifty, a hundred, hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and most students are making money. Some aren't. I have to say that because it's the truth. But the ones that aren't making any money aren't losing a lot of money, and I think that's important. All right. We also have Nicola, and I knew this was going to come. I actually said this a couple of weeks ago when Nicola hit hit twenty four. I got out. I took my I took my stake at twenty four. And I said, let's wait till Nicola goes below 17 before we jump in again. Sure enough, it's below. It actually went below 15 the other day. I bought a bunch because I thought that was a great price. And I'm just going to write it back up to 22. That's all I need. I just need 22. I'm good. And I'm going to write it back up. Now, Nicola, we might. By the way, I bought. I, I got to tell you what I bought. I bought a $10 strike into, I think it was June, for 6 bucks. That's great price. So that's going to that's gonna be an awesome one. If it, especially if it is 22, I'll easily double my money on that one. That's an easy one. I actually did a covered call on Nikola that ex um, that uh, I it expired, right? Yeah, I guess it expired. And you yeah. kept and you yeah. kept the stock. Yes, yeah, so yeah. I've got the stock. Yeah. So I'm just tomorrow. I mean, uh, yeah, Monday. You I'm sell just going to sell call. another cover. Yeah, call. absolutely. That's another thing we teach: cover calls. <laughs> By the way, you want you want to learn a strategy that you cannot lose money on. Well, I shouldn't say you can't lose money because you can if the stock tanks. Yeah, you, you could, can lose you money could. in the stat, right? The stock tanks. And then you got to be really careful not to buy, not to sell covered calls on margin because if the stock tanks, you lose double your money. But that's all right. It's not, it's not likely that those things are going to happen, especially if you're in good plays. And covered calls are, are actually a great way to do this. Uh, so also the other one. So here's something interesting. I've been following Tesla again. Now, I'm going to tell you, I, I, I invested in Tesla a long, long time ago. I, I just Tesla's just not for me. It's too fatty, and it's also too fatty. And what I mean by that is the premiums are way too high on the stock options. But if you're watching Tesla, I'm going to predict Tesla to be in the 300s probably in, in June. So we're going to see that, you know, we're going to see Facebook and Apple take off from here. And we're going to see Tesla start to drop down to the 300s. My prediction is Tesla will end up somewhere in the 200s. And that's where it'll stay for quite a while. And so just watch that. If you guys want to see it, you guys want to call me out on it, that's okay. But that that's my prediction for, for, for that. Is, uh, by the way, Zoom. Uh, I got to tell you, Zoom is a play right now, like an incredible play right now. I, I, I don't even understand how it can't be a play right now. I, I actually set my alert. I have a little bit of Zoom, but I set my alert for less than three hundred. If it goes to, um, below three hundred, dive on it. Just throw money at it and wait for it to come back. Because next earnings, it's going to pop to four hundred again. That's that's an easy no brainer. I mean, Zoom is not going away. Did it hit four hundred in this play? did right it went over 400. it went over 400 yeah yeah i mean <coughs> you know it's been as high as 590 i think uh yeah 588 yeah 588 right right so so um so i mean that's fantastic but i don't expect that for, again for a long time if it happens yeah, at all even it, considering where it's at right now 
a 70 point run between 3 yeah, right. 330 and 400 is is a lot of money to be made. Right. And I actually so I, so I think 300 is the, is definitely a place to be. It'll be a psychological uh, a psychological um, support point. And then if it happens to go down again, uh, 280 and if it happens to go down again 250. But I I I I, I mean I would I, I would be upset if it went from 300 to 250 if I bought a stock option, but at the same time I would hang in there and I would double down on it. So looking at the uh the cost of those options. Wow, I haven't seen anything that expensive. That's what's crazy too. The, the you know, what if nuts. we did a covered call on that? Well, covered call would be a great place, especially now. Three thirty-seven would be a great covered call. You get you get fifty bucks for a stock option. You you, you get a three thirty-seven. Uh, you buy the stock for three thirty-eight, whatever. You sell the covered call for a rent between forty and fifty bucks. So it'll cost thirty-three grand. Yeah, I mean, you, you, what's your risk that the stock goes to two eighty? So what if it goes below two eighty? That's the only time you could possibly lose money. So it's a great it's it is it's a great covered call. The problem is again the stock is expensive. So in order to buy a hundred shares, you're looking at thirty three thousand just to buy the hundred shares, which you get fifty bucks back. So it, you know it, it's not it's actually a really good play. I like it as a covered call. All right, what else we got? We got a couple more minutes. Anything you want? Anything you you want me to look up? Mm, no. <laughs> um. No. Um. I no. Well, I'm around you enough that I know what your <laughs> what your picks are. <laughs> you but had a good week, didn't you? Last week? Yeah. Uh right now, see, kind of what happened to me was Facebook and Apple dropped pretty cheaply mm -hmm. three and a half, four weeks out from the previous earnings. Right. So I ended up uh loading up on them because I definitely like the prices. So I'm kind of in it now, and I'm just yeah, going to ride it until earnings. Me too. Uh, yeah, I, I, just expect the same thing. To, I expect that I'm positioned very well. You are. You are. If you I have Facebook and Apple, you you definitely are. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna make a lot of money in April. Okay. Now there's going to be a point, and I don't think it's coming yet, but there's going to be a point where Facebook's going to become a bad play. A and I'm tell you what's happening. You know, you got all these people being banned from Facebook, like me. I mean, I was I was banned several times. And I'm getting tired of it. So in other words, it's like I don't even want to post anything provocative on Facebook anymore. So it's gonna there's gonna be other people thinking that way. But Facebook is never gonna be a company that's ever gonna go out of business. But there's gonna be a bad month and a bad earnings. Anyway, I think we're running out of time. So if you want to hear more about that, come to investorschooling.com. All right. So thanks to our producer John Cole for helping us out today. Uh, after our earlier conversation, I'm sure he's gonna send me a copy of this show. <laughs> Okay, don't forget to visit investorschooling.com for your complimentary class this Thursday night at 7 p.m. on real estate investing and stock option investing. That's investorschooling.com. If you're a real estate agent who wants to do real estate deals, our brokerage, investor brokerage, is 100% commission. So you definitely want to check that out. We'll see you Thursday night at 7 p.m. We're out of here. <laughs> <laughs>